Charcoal and a hill and a piece of metal. You know, before the state bought this property 10 or 12 years ago, uh, the family that owned it had it leased for cattle. And for the last, you know, 150 years, it's been used to, to graze cows. And what the cow people would do is come in with a bulldozer and bulldoze up all the palmetto and oak trees, and everything and and uh, let the grass come up so the cows could eat the grass. So when they bulldozed everything up, they would uh, set fire to it and burn it. And that's why you have these little hills. They're, you see them all over the state, and it's from the last hundred years of cow people bulldozing up the landscape, burning it to uh, get more grass to grow for their, for their cows. So probably... 50, 60, 70 years ago, this place looked a lot different than it does. It was probably very few pine trees, uh, very few oaks, very little palmetta, and uh, mostly grass for cows. <laughs> and since that's not as big a, uh, you know, in close, this was never real good cattle country because it's so darn dry in the wintertime. But uh, all the stuff that you see that's grown up here in the last that you're seeing is probably recent, the last 100 years prior to that. If you look back at the old aerials, the first aerials they took when they came to Florida, the, uh, the landscape is, there's just almost no trees. In about 1930, 1920, it's just, everything's pretty well scraped flat, and burned and, and uh, used for grazing cows. Well, they got a gopher hole over here. Uh huh. See the home? Good eye. Huh? Yeah, this one looks fresh. Some tracks there. Oh yeah. He's there, all right. What I want you not to do is not stand where you're standing. That gopher hole goes in and goes over that way, and if you stand over there, cave you can cave it in. And. Uh, there's, I think your book said there's 200 um, animals that live in these gopher holes, different species. You're probably on them right there, because there's another home. Yeah, but that one's all collapsed, yeah. collapsed anyway. Fresh tracks there. <laughs> but when you find a big little, little uh, apron of clean sand is an indication that that gopher's going and coming on a pretty regular basis. And the hole is big, so it's probably a, you know, an elderly gopher, maybe 75 or 100, 125 years old. They're called a cornerstone species because all of the uh, creatures that live in those holes and run into the holes uh, when, it, when the place burns uh, are dependent upon the gopher and, the, and his cavity. The little shrews, there's a shrew that lives out here, and there's a little mole. There's that little Florida mouse. These are all subterranean <coughs> mammals. And they, their burrows all intersect the gopher tortoise hole. So they can run over, go in the gopher tortoise hole, and get into their burrow real quick. And the entrance won't collapse. Everywhere they make an entrance, it's, you know, you know they have difficulty maintaining it. So they use the gopher hole because they know somebody else will maintain their entrance to their home. One of the problems is rattlesnakes like to live in the holes. And so they- go in there and eat the eggs they, too. Who do? Iguanas. Iguanas? Yeah. <laughs> Did you see the pictures of the iguanas on Boca Grande last falling out of the trees at the cold spell? They had a movie showing the Banyan Street and the guy just ran the camera a minute and then plump, plump. <laughs> Every four or five seconds, one would fall out of the tree because it just got so cold. 